Thank you so much, and welcome, everyone, to the second Healthy People 2020 Progress Review. I'm Dr. Howard Toad, the Assistant Secretary for Health at the Department of Health and Human Services, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you again. And if this is your first time, we hope you join us on a regular basis as we examine the progress made toward National Healthy People 2020 objectives. This is a long-standing tradition of periodically taking stock of Healthy People goals and objectives to see if we made progress in making our nation healthier and meeting or moving toward our t- targets. And for these progress reviews, we focus on and discuss an issue of public health importance that's supported by two Healthy People 2020 topic areas. We do this pairing to reflect shared subject matter between the two topic areas and also to break down silos of public health concerns. So today we're very pleased to talk about violence across the lifespan, uh, to welcome federal and non-federal stakeholders. And before we go further, I really want to thank so much the many who have helped coordinate these review groups, particularly our Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion and our federal core planning group. Uh, Next slide, please. This slide shows the progress review overview. Uh, I did mention that violence across the lifespan is the theme, and today we're going to be hearing more about the impact of violence in all age groups and where we've made progress and where we need to do do more as a nation. The objectives are found in, first, the injury and violence prevention area, and then, secondly, the occupational safety and health topic area. And we are joining these two topic areas to talk about particularly about workplace violence when we hear from our community-based partner. Before we do that, we're going to be hearing from Health and Human Services officials who will talk about their research and programs in moving the nation closer toward reaching these targets. Since uh, this whole effort is interdisciplinary, we are absolutely thrilled that we have colleagues from the Department of Justice, the Department of Labor, and the Department of Education who are also joining us to field questions from the audience. The next slide shows the evolution of healthy people over the years, and we're very proud of this slide because Healthy People 2020 represents the fourth iteration of this historic project. You can see on the slide how the overarching goals have evolved over the decades, how the number of topic areas have grown dramatically from some 15 in 1990 to some 42 today, just reflecting the growing complexity of our work. The topic areas for Healthy People 2020 now include new areas like emergency preparedness, very relevant in the news lately, global health, LGBT issues, social determinants, and many other very exciting themes. All of this can be captured on healthypeople.gov, so we hope that you will regularly consult that website because we're very proud of the progress we've made in making that accessible and available to people across the nation and, indeed, around the world. The next slide shows you some screenshots from that website. Again, for Healthy People 2020, we have some 42 topic areas and 1,200 objectives. Uh, You can use the data on this website to customize your searches, and we are working very, very hard to make this data available to diverse users and make this an area that people can use for action in their communities. This is very much a collaborative stakeholder-driven process, and we're very proud of that process that's led us to this webinar today that joins efforts in injury and violence prevention and also occupational safety and health. The next slide shows the public health impact of injury and violence as a healthy people topic area, and injury and violence represents the leading cause of death for people ages 1 through 44, which may not be well recognized by the public health community. So that's a very important teaching point. And then, of course, injury and violence affects people of all ages, some 181,000 deaths in the year 2010. That's one death for every three minutes, and those deaths encompass areas like homicide, particularly for younger people, poisoning, falls for people who are age 65 and older, 
and motor vehicle traffic deaths for people of all ages. If you add this all up, this is some 30 million emergency department visits a year and over $500 billion annually in medical care and lost productivity. The next slide summarizes the public health impact for occupational safety and health, the other key topic area we are reviewing today. And you can see here that there are some 49,000 deaths a year from work-related illnesses, almost 3 million workers injured in 2010, and some 137,000 work-related assaults that led to people being seen in emergency departments. You add all this up, and there's tremendous cost to the healthcare system as well. So the next slide shows uh, what this webinar uh, will look like for the rest of the hour and a half with some outstanding presenters from the federal family and also from the community, and then, of course, as I mentioned, key federal partners who are involved in our question and answer. We're going to be hearing from my good friend and colleague, Dr. Linda DeGudis, who is director of the CDC National Center for Injury Prevention and Control. She'll be talking about the injury and violence prevention topic area. Then we'll be hearing from Don Castillo, director of the Division of Safety Research at the CDC National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. We are very pleased to have a community leader, Matt London, who is a health and safety specialist at the New York State Public Employees Federation, uh, who will be talking about their experience in reducing worksite violence. And then for the question and answer, we have federal partners, Paul Kessner, who is director of the Safe Supportive Schools Program at the U.S. Department of Education, Thomas Foyt, who is executive senior science advisor at the National Institute of Justice, and William Wiatrowski, the associate commissioner for compensation and working conditions the Bureau of Labor Statistics, U.S. Department of Labor. But, of course, I cannot continue before giving special thanks to our wonderful friend and longtime colleague and leader, Dr. Ed Sondek, who will be kicking off with a data presentation as a director for the National Center for Head Health Statistics. And I just want to say that Dr. Sondek has been a national leader in health statistics and public health for his whole career. Uh, he has been a tremendous supporter for healthy people and has been a champion of healthy people for decades. On a personal note, I can't think of anyone who is more dignified, professional, absolutely committed to mission, and it is very bittersweet for me to say that this will be Dr. Sondek's last presentation as part of the Healthy People Progress Review effort before he transitions on to a new chapter in his career and away from the National Center for Health Statistics. So, Dr. Sondek, we want to give you a special thanks and uh, express our appreciation for your years of dedication and leadership in the world of public health. And so with that, I'm now going to turn this over to my wonderful friend and colleague, Dr. Don Wright, Director of the Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotions. 